become my... <laughs> this is what happens to old exercise books that get left at school. And if they've got some clean paper in them, we don't waste them. I haven't filled it, I can assure you, with uh, this morning's uh, thoughts. Um, as I, I've been thinking about this message, um, I'm going to be really honest with you. Um, I've really struggled with it. I'll grab all of this. I've really struggled with it this morning. I had all these thoughts going through my head. And this morning, um, I think that the Holy Spirit's just been moving. And I don't know whether you felt it, but thanks for leading us, Steve, in the song. But in that last song, I really felt God moving amongst us. Uh, I hope I wasn't the only one. But, uh, yeah, I really did feel the Holy Spirit with us there. So, so, so why is this passage come into to my mind? Uh, well, when, when Paul uh, said that he was going on holiday and he asked me to, uh, to speak this Sunday, he said, um, I'm just leaving it to you, Steve. I just pray God will lay something on your heart. And, and, and this is what God's laid on my heart. And it's what God laid on Paul's heart for the church in uh, Thessalonica, the church of Thessalonians. And I believe that it's what God's saying to us today. For us here at this church today. And as I've been looking into it, it's really got me excited. Aren't we in a world of doom and gloom? We put the TV on and it, it makes me feel ill. It really does start to get to you, doesn't it? You know, we prayed about the situation in Ukraine and you know that I've got friends over there. I'm connected with the International Aid Trust, the ministry that we're, we're working over there. And my heart is just broken for those people. But God is moving. God is moving. So I started having a little look into this book, <coughs> 1 Thessalonians, and I'm sure we all know a little bit of the background. It was written by Paul to the church there. And I started thinking a little bit more about how did Paul get there? Well, Paul, he went out to um, minister to the, the people there and to start to share the good news of Jesus to the Jews there who were, who were waiting for the Messiah. And he went to tell them that Jesus has come. And we've got that same message today. Jesus is here. So he went there. And if we look in the book of Acts, Acts 17, it gives a very short history really of his time there and it just mentions a, a few things and it says that he was there for three sabbaths so that implies to me he was only there a very short time so when he went to speak to these people he wasn't spending years with them some commentators think it was about three months but in Acts, it actually says three Sabbaths. So it was a relatively short time that he was sharing the good news of Jesus, how he'd come to earth and uh, he was alive. He'd, he'd, he'd risen again. Now, a lot happened for Paul as he, uh, he was there. The, the leaders in the church, they became jealous of him. And they weren't, weren't happy at all with the message that he was uh, saying. 
They tried to, to knock him and said he was a bad character. And they got a mob together to drive him out. And they said, you know, he's, he's, he's causing trouble. We need to get this man out of our area. So they were driving Paul out for sharing the good news. Now, it mentions in that passage that there was a guy there called Jason. And Jason had welcomed Paul and Silas into his home. And he spoke well of Paul and Silas. And he was actually dragged before the officials. So in this short time that Paul's been there, whether that's three weeks or three months, a short time, people had really grabbed hold of this message of Jesus. It wasn't something they'd just heard and done nothing with. It says here that Jason had grabbed hold of that message and he was actually taken before the officials in the town there. So in a short period of time, he grabbed hold of this message and he was prepared to put his life down for what he'd heard. So Paul was, had had an amazing impact in a short period of time. It says uh, at one point that um, there, there was, he had to, Paul had to leave under duress. He didn't want to leave, but he had to leave. So I'm just trying to set the scene of this town, what it was like, what he'd been ministering to, and the, the persecution that was starting to come. And it says this, as soon as it became night, some brothers sent Paul and Silas away to Berea. So he had to get out. Short time there, and he had to get out. From there, he traveled on to Athens, continuing to preach the gospel. And when he'd been away, a period of only months, he started wondering what was happening to that early church. He was getting concerned for that early church. And so he decided the thing to do was to send Timothy to go back, see the people of the Thessalonian people and to see how they were getting on. So really, he sent Timothy there to check up on what, had been, what was happening to those people. And I think in the back of Paul's mind, he probably hasn't got, he's probably really struggled. He's been driven out of that town. He knew he'd shared the gospel, but maybe in the back of his mind he's thinking, I wonder if anybody grabbed hold of that message. I wonder if that church is continuing. And he wanted to find out. So he sent Timothy back to go and minister to the people, to encourage them to, and, and to serve with them. And so this is where the story's at. Timothy returns, and he returns with a good report. And that's what prompts Paul to write this letter to, uh, to the Thessalonian people. It's not a letter to bash them around and say, you should be doing this, you should be doing that. It's a letter to encourage. It's a letter to build the church up. And I think Paul was so excited to see what God had done in such a short time to see how that church had really taken place. So he wrote a letter to encourage 
this new church, the new believers who were there. And this just got my thinking, have we, or do we, encourage people? They sometimes say, don't they, there's builder-uppers and there's knocker-downers. I really pray that I'm a builder-upper. We just watch the news and that knocks us down enough, doesn't it? We don't need any more knocker-downers, but we need people who can build us up, who can encourage us in what God is doing and how God is in this business of changing lives. That's exciting. And some people think, well, what, what can I do? What can I do? And I've just had a lovely chat with Greta this morning. And, and, and Greta's getting a, one of the seniors in our church family. And, and life's a bit tough. And last Sunday, Greta really encouraged me. And do you know what she said? She just said a few short words, and it was this. She said, I love my church, my family. And that's what God wants for us here at Inglewhite. He wants us to love our church. He wants us to be part of his family. And Greta just said to me before, when I asked if she'd mind if I just said these few words, she said, I sometimes wonder why I'm here. And she has encouraged me for today. Are we a building up people or are we a knocker down? I want us to be a church that's a builder upper. A church that gets people fired up, gets people excited for what he's going to do. And I believe that God has got amazing things in store for this church. We're going to continue looking in this first chapter and see what God did and how Paul encouraged those people. And I want us to be encouragers this morning. I want us to be encouragers because that's what God wants. He wants our hearts to be his hearts. He wants us to build people up. As I was thinking um, about this message, a timeline dropped out of my Bible. And some people here may remember, it's actually eight years ago, we did a children's talk and we handed out a tape measure. And we asked people to tear off at the beginning in the centimeters line, their age, because what we've torn off has gone. And then to look at it and see what God's going to do. And this has really, really challenged me because on here it says my age was 47. And I've just been thinking, what have I done? What have I done in those eight years? I pray I've been a builder-upper. I pray I've been an encourager. And I pray that people have come to know Jesus through maybe something that's been said or that's been done. So if we look quickly into these first few verses, it says, to the church of Thessalonians in God the Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. In, that word in. And that says to me that they'd really grabbed hold of the message. They weren't just thinking about it, they were in it. They jumped in with both feet. And I remember a few years ago, we were on holiday in the south of France. And uh, with uh, our Matt and Ben with us, and their cousin Josh, 
And we were down on the beach and there were some amazing rocks uh, that jutted out into the, the sea. And the boys decided they were going to jump off these rocks into the sea. And it was probably about 15 meters, I would think, maybe. So it, it was high anyway. And I remember the three boys climbing up and they were looking over the edge. And the, the, the decision they had to make was, am I going in or not? And I remember our Matt, he looks over the edge and he just went in. Josh, he did a little bit more thinking about it. He was like teetering on the edge, looking. And after quite a while, he went for it, he jumped in. And then it came to Ben and he looked and he turned around and he went back and he looked and then he turned around again. And eventually he walked down and didn't jump in. But this church had jumped in. These people had jumped in and they were on this journey with God. So they jumped in. They were in God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. And then it continues on verse 2. We always thank God for all of you, mentioning you in our prayers. We continually remember before our God and Father, your work, your work, produced by faith, prompted by love, and your endurance inspired by the hope of our Lord Jesus. I think there's three points there that really grab, can grab hold of us as individuals, but as a church. The first one, produced by faith. They'd really grabbed hold of this message that Paul had shared. And we are told, aren't we, to grab hold of Jesus in faith. Where is, on a personal level, our, our faith this morning? If we don't have faith, what do we have? Not a lot. And we've been promised that if we have faith in Jesus, that one day we'll meet with him. And this church, of the Thessalonians, they had faith. They grabbed hold, this early church, a few believers, they grabbed hold of that faith. And I believe today we are a church of faith. We are a church of faith. <clears throat> 197 years ago, well, actually, it's probably 198 or 199. People had faith to build this building. They had faith. About 100 years later, they had faith to build a hall next to it. Unfortunately, the floor is going a bit rotten, but we are going to get that sorted. But over the years, their faith has meant that people have met in this place. In faith, eight years ago, something like that, this church was extended, built bigger in faith. And God provided for that. And I really believe that as individuals, but especially as a church, if we grab hold of that faith, God provides. He pulls the stuff together. I was talking with Ben yesterday and he'd been talking to a, a man who um, goes to his church. He leads a, an organization called Transforming Lives for, for Good. And uh, so it, it, people who are struggling, maybe in education and things like that, he, he's there to support them and encourage them. And God laid it on his heart to buy a building a few years ago, and it was two million pounds. And God told him to buy it. So he started fundraising. And in faith, he set off on this journey. 
he got to £500,000, a quarter of what he needed. And completely out of the blue, the man who was selling it asked for a meeting with him. So he went to see the guy who was selling it, and he just said to him, I've been thinking about this property I've got to sell. You can have it for half a million. It's yours. That's what God can do. We've seen it here in this church. And that's what God does when we step out in faith. If we step out in faith, where does that come from? Well, I believe that's prompted by love. Prompted by love. When we've got Jesus in our hearts, he gives us a love for others. And that love wants more people to see, see him, to meet with him. Produced by faith, prompted by love. And then it says, and your endurance inspired by the hope of our Lord Jesus Christ. Endurance inspired. This morning, um, I've never actually thought, of th that word had never come out, endurance, as I was looking at, uh, at this message. And this morning, I was sent a prayer. And it just says this. God, help me never become tired of doing good. Help me never to become tired of doing good things. As I grow closer to you, give me the endurance to serve and love others, no matter how I'm feeling. I want to bring those around me closer to you. So please help me to act more like you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Endurance. So often as we go through life, we want the easy option, don't we? Um, I know when I was at school, it wasn't my most prolific of times in, uh, in learning. It's a shame, really. But I just didn't have the endurance. I, I used to get fed up and tired. One of the things I really struggled with was reading. And when I was at primary school, I used to think, why on earth do I have to learn to read? I, I don't need that. I, I, and I really, really struggled with reading. And, and, and I have to give mum every credit here because she had some endurance with me. <laughs> endurance, perseverance. And I remember my head teacher saying to mum at a parents' evening, he said, all you need to do is find something he's really interested in and he'll get it. Uh, and one of the things that I had a, like a passion for as a little boy was cars. I just loved cars. And, and I remember dad, whenever he went past the garage, he called in and picked up a car brochure. I used to bring it home and give it to me. That was the thing that I needed to give me endurance to learn to read. Because it's what I was interested in. It's what I, I cared about at that time. And, but it only came from mum and dad's endurance with me, keeping going, that I was able to make the challenge of reading and actually get over that line. And, so here it says about endurance inspired by hope. We've got an amazing hope, haven't we, in Jesus. We know 
that if our time comes to an end today and we are called home, we die. If we've got faith in Jesus, we'll be with him. We know that. We've got that hope. And we also know that if Jesus was to come again, which he's told us he will do one day, one day he's going to come back onto this earth and take the people who love him back to heaven. We've got that hope as well. Endurance. I want to encourage everybody here. Sometimes we get tired. And I'm sure Paul, when he was on his journeys, he got tired. And he probably thought, what on earth am I doing here? I've shared this story before, but I remember a few years ago, I was in a little village in, in Africa. And I just thought, what on earth am I doing here? But you know, God knew. And people, God laid words on my heart. People were starting to become Christians and they were coming forward. Some things don't make sense. But we've got to have that endurance that when things get hard, when things get tough, that we can knuckle down and we can grab hold of God's hand and he will guide us through and he will inspire us and he will lead us. And as a church today, we've got faith. We do things because we love God. <coughs> Whatever we do in this church, it's got to be done through love. And that's what we do. We try to do it because we love God and we want more people to get to know him. And he wants us <coughs> to keep on going. He wants us to endure the times that can be difficult whether that's as a church or whether that's as individuals in our life's journey, because we can put our hope in him. So as we come to a close of this, I just want to pull out one or two things in the final verses. <laughs> It says this in verse 5, because our gospel came to you not simply with words, but also with power. Not just with words, but with power. And that really excited me. As we were singing that last song, I just really felt the Holy Spirit moving. I just felt him in my life moving. And, and that's what God wants for each and every one of us. He's given us the power of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes things don't just make sense in a worldly sense. But God, through his Holy Spirit, wants to guide us and encourage us. Then it says in verse 6, you became imitators of us and of the Lord. So this church, when Timothy had gone to check up on them, encourage them to build them up, what did he see? He saw Jesus. He saw the, the message that Paul had shared with those people. And they were copying what they'd seen. And that's what Jesus wants for each and every one of us. He wants us to be imitators of him. Verse 7, And so you became a model to all believers. <clears throat> this church, that had probably been going for about six months, 
became a model for others. It doesn't that exciting? Through the power of the Holy Spirit, it grabbed hold of them. Through the words that Paul had shared and Silas at the beginning, they grabbed hold of it. They'd wanted to move forward. They didn't have it easy. They had it tough. But Paul wrote back to them and said, you're a model. We can learn so much from you. Verse 8. The Lord's message rang out for you. Not only in Macedonia and Achaia. And that's what God wants to do. He wants to use us as individuals, as a church, for his message to be sent out. And I know that through this church over the years, through our work with missions, which is sharing the gospel uh, of Jesus' love for them all over the world, that that has made a huge difference to so many different parts of the world today. It rang out. A bit lower down it says, they tell how you turn to God from idols to serve. And to wait for his son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, Jesus, who rescues us. I want to encourage people today and I know lots of people here are serving. And that's a real blessing of the church here, is to serve. But some, maybe there's somebody here who's wondering, what can they do? And it's not necessarily in the church here, it might be somewhere else. But sometimes, it's when we, we step out and serve, step out in faith, when the rubber hits the road, that's when we really see God moving. The last thing I claim to be at all is a, is a speaker. Um, I just share what Jesus puts on my heart. And I find it crazy, some of the situations that I've been in, some of the places that I've been. And sometimes it's scary. It's really scary. But we have to make that decision to serve and to step out. Maybe there's somebody here who God's just challenging a little bit about stepping out into a, something new. I want to encourage you with that today. That maybe God's saying, I want you to step out into something new for me. So our time's gone. Just in closing. As a church, as individuals, where do we put our faith? What prompts us to do things? Is it God's love? And then to endure, to keep on going, to inspire people, to give people a hope, 
to care for people. Because if we grab hold, of, grab hold of those things and become imitators of God, become a model for him, people will turn to Jesus. And as a church, this won't be big enough. This place won't be big enough. Heavenly Father, I just pray that uh, the words that I've shared this morning have uh, encouraged people. Of maybe if people are just struggling and, and feeling jaded and tired, that it's built them up. And Lord, if there's somebody here who's just looking at that new way of serving that you've just spoken to them this morning, we thank you for being with us. And we just ask these things in Jesus' name.